Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone out there in Facebook land. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Lewis Reyes, and I am your Exchange's Senior Enlisted Advisor. I am super pumped today. Uh, before, before I got on the air, I went and worked out. I had a nice little breakfast. Now, you know, I'm probably, this probably isn't the healthiest, but I'm pumping myself with a little caffeine. No uh, federal endorsement intended here, uh, but just... Uh, <laughs> I am so pumped because our guest is going to talk about all of these issues. But before we get to him, Julie, Leah, how are you ladies doing today? Hi, doing good. Um, how are you, Leah? I'm doing good, but wow, Chief, I'm feeling like I haven't done any of that today. Yeah. <laughs> ah. I, I haven't either. None of it. Done. And I do want to say that this is a really rare opportunity where I get to use like one of my favorite words ever. Do you want to know what, do you want to know what the word is? Yeah. What is that? Gosh. It's pen, what, what pen, word? it's pen ultimate. I love that word. It means second to last. <laughs> and this is chief second to last episode. I am a big word nerd. So that's one of my favorite words. This is your pen <laughs> word ultimate nerd. episode. I am. <laughs> well, our pen ultimate. All right. Pen I'll, ultimate. Use that. I'll wrap this Good. all up with a pen ultimate word. I got, I'm going to have to write that down. <laughs> Next let's, to last. Hey, next to last. Let's, uh, yep. let's, <laughs> hey, let's get this going, Julie. You mind introducing our guest? Oh, we have a great guest with us today, Chief. He is a retired Air Force Master Sergeant, and he now serves as a member of the President's Council on Sports, Fitness, and Nutrition. He is here today with us to share insights on staying fit to fight. Please help us welcome the Honorable Robert Wilkins. Robert, 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 Robert. There we go. Fitness, fitness, fitness. Fitness, fitness. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm pleased to be here. Robert, thanks so much for taking time to join us and for everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. If you have any questions for Rob, we'll be reading those live throughout the broadcast. Now's a good time to start a watch party to enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not following us, you should because chief chats are every Tuesday and Thursday and really any other day of the week. And you'll know who's coming up next. <laughs> well, sir, thank you so much. We're excited to have you on today. As you can see, I'm pumped. I'm ready to go. So where are you coming to us from and how have you been surviving uh, in this time of having to stay home? Well, first of all, thank you all, all three of you for having me today. It's a real pleasure. Chief, it's uh, an honor to be with you today. I'm a fellow New Jersey, Newark, New Jersey resident. So uh, I felt like I knew when we first talked, I thought we'd, we'd go way back, but that's the first time we talked. So great. Thank you for your service and what you continue to do. Um, I'm currently in Northern Virginia, in Leesburg, Virginia, which is about 45 minutes outside of uh, Washington, D.C. After I retired, my last assignment was at the Pentagon. So we moved out here to the suburbs where it's nice and quiet. And uh, we've been enjoying it. So I've been out about 10 years now, which I can't believe it's gone by so quickly. Um, what have I been doing since the pandemic? Um, lots of reading. And one of the things, um, another hobby that I took up was I started going on Ancestry. Stand by. Hey, stand, stand by. So we're off. Are we live? Yeah, we're live. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. It, it went off over here and it just okay. went off on Facebook real quick. I apologize. Uh, okay. Go right, go right ahead. I thought we were off the air and wanted to bring it back on, but hey, everybody makes mistakes, guys. My pen ultimate episode. We make mistakes. Sorry. Right. <laughs> Sorry, Rod. Go right ahead. You just off to you. make sure we're paying attention. Exactly. <laughs> there you are. Um, as I was saying, though, what I did was I did I uh, found Ancestry.com, and I started doing a. Ah my family to go back and see how far I can go. And we went back to about the 1500s. So on my mom's side, we come from England. And one of the persons that um, I'm a distant relative to is this guy named Chatham. Chatham, he was the person who started the free public library in England. So I'm related to the guy who started the free public library in England. Also related to um, a fashion designer named Liz Claiborne. So oh, wow. as well. <laughs> And uh, we're able to trace our family military history back to the American Revolutionary War. So we have a rich tradition from my grandfathers to my uncles, to myself and to cousins presently serving of serving our great nation. Oh, wow. That's, you know, that's you, really cool. <laughs> Julie, you know what I got out of that? A, a lot a, a pretty cool to go back to the 1500s. But what I also got out of it is I think, you know, if we have any 
library books that we haven't returned. He could probably hook us up so we don't have to pay the fee. And we should be getting some <laughs> some cologne or something or some clothing from Liz Claiborne, right? Could we get that hooked up? <laughs> you look at the exchange, you can get whatever you want. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> So, Rob, can you tell us a little bit about the President's Council on Sports, Fitness, and Nutrition and what your role is there? So, the President's Council of Sports, Fitness, and Nutrition was started in the 1950s by President Eisenhower in World War II. He felt like a lot of the youth in our country were, I wouldn't call them lazy, but they weren't, (laughs) and they were getting out of shape. So, he was concerned about um, uh, filling the forces, and if you don't have healthy kids, you can't fill the forces. So he decided to come up with this council, and then uh, President Kennedy took the next step, where he actually had a person who served on the President's Council sit at the table with him many times to talk about the importance of fitness. Currently, um, I sit as one of 21 members who are handpicked by the President to serve on the Council, and our, our, our goals are sports participation for kids of all abilities, and to try to promote healthy living for all Americans. Um, with the pandemic, it's, it's a bit tough right now. Um, you know, lots of people are inside. Lots of parents aren't allowing their children to participate in sports. Sports are shut down for the most part. And so I'm, I'm a bit concerned about the fitness level uh, of our country, but I'm sure once things open back up, we'll get right back on it. And uh, just like Chief did this morning, we'll be, we'll be working out strong, hard, and fast. So, so, so there's a, right, a, a lot of people would say in America, we have an obesity issue. Yes, sir. What, what, what are the goals of, of the council, the president's council of sports, fitness, and nutrition to kind of combat that? What, how are you tackling that across the nation? Really, it's trying to get children involved just to go outside and move. So for instance, many people, they'll play computer games, they get on their phones and they're happy with that. But you know, when I grew up, and maybe when you grew up, Chief, and Leah and Julie, that we went outside and played. We were outside all day long until our parents said, you know, when the streetlights come on, you better be inside. Well, nowadays, children don't do that. Our youth don't do that. And many kids, usually by the time they're between 12 and 13, they're giving up on sports. Is it that it's too competitive? Is it that they don't feel like they're good enough? They're not having fun? And the number one reason that we found is because they're not having fun. So we have to make sports fun again. We have to make physical activity fun again. Doesn't mean you have to be a hardcore athlete. You just have to move most days of the week. So that's our goal is to to encourage children and their families because the family is their really important component of this is to um, get out and exercise, get out and move. I I thought, you know, when I was a kid, I thought sports inherently they're fun. So yes. is, there, is there a trend where you're seeing data or something that says sports, our kids are seeing, thinking that it's not fun anymore? Or is it too well, serious? What is it? It seems to me that it's the serious competitive nature of it, that many of them want to have fun, where the coaches and the parents and the, and the leagues themselves, they're looking to win championships. They're looking to go to the next level. And many of the families, you know, some of these kids, this is their way to uh, higher education. For many kids... There are two ways that many people have um, um, achieved their college, college dream, military and through sports. And sports is scholarships. So when you have a child who feels pressured that, you know, if they don't perform well on the field, that they won't get a scholarship, that's a pretty tough thing to put a 15, 16, 17-year-old through. So, for instance, many of them will just say, I just don't want to play. So we're just trying to find ways to make sports interesting and fun and where they can just go out and have a good time, where they don't have to worry about the pressure of performing. You raise great points. I've seen it. I'm a mom. So I've, I've seen kids face that type of pressure and, and want to quit sports um, before high school because they've been to, you know, practice after practice after practice. That's all they do. There's, there's nothing else. It's not fun. It's like a job for them. Right. So I've seen that happen. You're spot on with your comments. Right. We want to make it work. We want to make it fun because work will come. Once you hit around 19, 20, 21 years old, the work will be there. But mm-hmm. if it's fun. And also what we find sports is a great way to diversify your friends. You know, right now we're having racial issues. Well, sports teams are a way that many people find people of different backgrounds and cultures and races to say, you're no different than I am. And how do I know that? Because you're my teammate. It's just like the military. You know, you'll find out that we're more similar than we're different. 
But sports, it gives you that avenue. It gives you that opportunity to say, we're all the same. And actually, I'm, I'm honored to have you as my teammate. Excellent points. And Rob, you spent 26 years in the Air Force. Yes. How does what you learned in the military help you in your role in the council? Well, uh, what I think I learned in the Air Force really was communication, common sense, and conversation. You have to talk about what you're trying to do. So often, many people are so driven, like, I have to get my point across. But if you communicate your thoughts and you talk about what you're trying to do, you find that you can come to a successful outcome. So with the council, we have so many people coming at us from different angles and different perspectives. And you have people who are having, um, they live in disadvantaged areas where you have people who are doing really, really well. But how do we make it all where we all can get these kids to play sports together? We can all unite and come together and do things as a, an American family. So I learned about compromise. You know, we can't do everything I want to do, but what can we do that makes us work? So you get a little bit and I get a little bit, but the outcome is a successful outcome. Hey, Rob, so sorry, I had to unmute my thing here. <laughs> so, so you've been an advocate for health and fitness for probably most of, most of your life. What drove that passion at such an early age? I think what drew my passion, that's a great question, Chief, was I was skinny. So growing up, I was skinny. So I would play basketball and get pushed around and shoved around. And I got tired of getting pushed and shoved around. So um, my first assignment out of the uh, basic training was to go to um, Pullman Air Station in Germany, where we were playing against some powerhouses like Bitburg and Spain Dahlem and Ramstein. They had big boys. I had to get stronger. So I decided, uh, I decided to start lifting weights. And uh, it made a big difference. I put on some, some good pounds, was able to dunk the basketball, felt like they couldn't push me around anymore, and um, really enjoyed it. But what really spurred me to keep going was um, when I was stationed at Patrick Air Force Base, the commander allowed me to put on health and fitness expos, probably before it was really, really popular. And uh, we did a health screening. And during that health screening, we found three people who had pre-existing conditions that they had no idea about. Thanks to that discovery, you know, two of them, we may have saved their lives. And because of that, you know, I was recognized with accommodation medal and all, but one of those people came up to me and said, because of you, I might have grandchildren now. That's a pretty powerful thing to happen. And it really was just about, you know, trying to take care of yourselves because so many of us in the military were driven, get the mission done, everybody before yourself. But like they say on an airplane, you got to put on your own oxygen mask first before you can take care of others. So like what you did today, going to the gym and taking care of yourself, that's a great thing because now you're strong and fit and you can help others. Sorry about that. I'm having some unmuting issues as, as okay. well. Um, <laughs> and now I really feel bad for not working out today. So, but I, it, the day is young. I, I, I can still get there. <laughs> I can still get there. Um, so, you know, eating well, clearly that has got to be a part of a holistic fitness approach. But what, are, what does your nutrition look like? And what do you, um, why are military initiatives that focus on healthy eating and fueling your body the right way? Why are those so important? Well, fuel is the source that moves you. So you have to eat well. So you have to be fit to fight, but you also have to have the proper energy. So, you know, a nice balance of carbohydrates and proteins and fats, you have to be fueled to do what you have to do. We have very, very demanding jobs in and out of the military, but if you're not properly nourished, you can't do your job. So I think it's extremely important in the military, uh, particularly that the dietitians and those who run the um, dining facilities provide basic, well-balanced meals to our troops. Um, you're asking them to do a demanding, a demanding thing, and if they're not properly fueled, how can they do that job? So I, I personally like, you know, um, fat, uh, low-fat foods. I like meat, like steaks. I like fish. I like chicken, turkey. And recently, our, my wife has me on tons of vegetables, so I really, really like eating a lot of vegetables and fruits. And uh, I usually try not to eat past 8, 8 o'clock uh, because I'm going to go to bed, and then I'm going to have that food on my stomach. So I usually try to have a you know, kind of an early dinner. But if I do eat something, you know, if I want to have a little ice cream or something, then maybe I have to go out for a walk or I have to pay the price, but I don't limit all my, um, my favorite sweets. You know, I like a cheesecake from now and here and now, and uh, I do like some ice cream. So 
Um, I don't limit them, but I, I, I just uh, see them all often. So I got a crazy, crazy question because the, the first time when we, when we talked, I didn't even know what you do existed, right? The President's yeah. Council of Sports, yeah. Fitness, and Nutrition, appointed by the President of the United States, been going on since the 1950s. So help me out here. We talked about nutrition. Do you go and, and, and maybe, you know, I don't want to say lobby against or, or fight for more healthier options on a big sale against big sugar or organizations like that. How does that work behind the scenes? Do you, are you into any of that or it's a random yeah. question? I'm just curious. No, we don't get involved in that. We're basically the person or, or the team that goes out there and we're the rah-rah folks. We go out and we want to make sure that people get involved in fitness and health. So for instance, um, when our council was named, the president held a White House workout where people came and they did football tosses and threw baseball. So we had Herschel Walker and Mariana Rivera and Dr. Oz, uh, Lou Ferrigno, the Incredible Hulk, and some others who came there and they just inspired kids to get moving, to exercise. I think that the, the president threw the football and looked at the baseball toss and um, his daughter Ivanka was out there uh, with the soccer pitch and the volleyball pitch. So we really are the people to say, get out there and move. The lobbying that's done from other agencies within the White House. Outstanding, outstanding. I just, I was just curious as to, do you have a, do you have a chat with them or talk with them and kind of say, hey, you know, it will kind of help from a, a global standpoint or a national standpoint. Something cool did happen though. You know, we were sitting at my house and uh, you get a phone call and saying the president of the United States would like to talk to you. So my son and my wife were there and the president called and he basically just wanted to tell all of us council members at our homes that he was proud of the work that we're doing, trying to promote youth sports. And um, again, Chief, we're from Newark, New Jersey. Who would ever have thought in my lifetime as a retired master sergeant, the president of the United States is going to call and just say, thanks for what you're doing. And Thanks for serving our country, because that's what I see this role as, is a continuance of service to our country. And for people and for people that don't know, are these on two-year terms? Is that how it's done? Because you just got reappointed, correct? Yes, sir. So the you go through a, um, a vetting process, and once you're vetted, uh, you have a two-year term, or you serve at the leisure of the president, so or the pleasure of the president. So um, I was fortunately la asked last month to come back for another two-year term, so depending on the elections, um, I'll be serving again until about 2022, and hopefully um, I'll get a chance to serve as long as possible because this is just a dream job. To One of the best things I've been able to do so far in this job is to go to Harlem, New York, and talk to about 150 kids about the importance of physical fitness and health. And for some of those kids, eating fast food is the way that their families can feed them because that's what they can afford. But we came here and we threw the ball around. We did a, um, a wall climb and we played basketball and they had such a great day. And we just thought, you know, through physical fitness, so many opportunities and so many possibilities are there, but we just have to, we have to encourage them and motivate them to get moving. For some kids, it's tough. You know, if you live in your city and you live on the 40th floor and your mom and dad don't want you to take the elevator downstairs by yourself, how can you get outside if they're not available, if they're working? But, you know, we just try to encourage them to do the best they can and, um, you know, inspire and, and um, give them inspiration to do the right things as well. Well, so as you know, as being a retired service member, you know, we have a lot of airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marine, Coasties and military families watching. What words of inspiration or thanks do you have for all of our heroes out there watching today? Thank you. I mean, there's so many opportunities for many of these smart young men and women to do other things, but they decide to serve our great nation. You know, um, I used to travel as a congressional liaison, and Trent Lott said something that I always remember. He said, when you're born in America, you've hit the lottery. Anything is possible. But anything is possible because we have freedom. And that comes from the young men and women who serve our country, you know, people like yourself, who said, you know, I have other opportunities, but I want to be a part of this great team, and that's Team America. So thank you for what you do. Keep safe, especially again during this COVID time. Thank their families. You know, the families are the backbone of your successful career. Um, thank the children. You know, so many of them, they have to get up and move and lose friendships. And, you know, it's a very, very tough life, but they continue to do it. They continue to do it well. And we still have the bright light that the rest of the world looks at. Excellent. Rob, you served as a fitness advisor for the Air Force. What were some of the biggest changes you saw in terms of health, fitness, and exercise programs for airmen during your career? 
So when I first joined the military, um, some of the senior folks used to smoke in offices. You know, <laughs> smoking in an office, that's not allowed, but you know, that was pretty common, you know. Um, we would go to the club and, you know, I never drank, but people would drink a little bit more alcohol than they do now. But what I found is during the 90s, there was a shift where fitness and health became a very, very important component to the military. It probably already was, but I think the emphasis was tightened up on it. So now um, people, they start their day with exercise. When I was stationed at the Pentagon, I remember I would go down and I would see General Casey or, or General Goldfinger, all these generals, you four-star generals, their locker is right next to you. That's how important fitness is. You know, when the people leading our military are there and showing that example, that's a really, really important thing. So I think that the military is the probably one of the biggest advocates of fitness because our lives can depend on it. You know, you want to be in the best shape of your of your best shape possible because you might meet meet it the day that you meet the worst enemy. And the way to get out of that situation may be on your physical fitness level. How strong, how much, how, how much can you run? How dedicated can you be to continuing the fight? And so you want to be fit to fight. Great, great words right there. That's right. Stay fit to fight. You never know, you know, when your physical fitness will come in handy. Of course, mental resilience and all those other pillars that support, you know, the human body. So these last few months have been pretty hard on everyone. How have you been able to continue to lead a lifestyle of health and fitness? And what advice would you give those that are largely confined at home? I would say take a deep breath. <clears throat> we will get past this. I think we're facing some difficult times and challenges right now. But we've faced it before. I, I once saw um, an article written said, if your grandparents were born in 1900, think of the things they saw and faced from World War I, World War II, the Spanish, uh, Spanish flu, Korea, Vietnam, stock market crashes, and they came through it. And many of those folks ended up providing words of wisdom to us. So I think this is our tough time right now. But, you know, we'll get past it. It just takes some time. And... Um, I, I, for me personally, I like to work out. I like to either go for a walk, ride the bike. I still um, lift weights because it helps me uh, take away of the stress. I like to read. And again, on Ancestry.com to find out who else I'm related to. And Chief, maybe I'll find that I'm related to you. So don't, <laughs> I might be coming looking for you, cousin. I'll be, I'll be at Tyndall. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. <laughs> but really just trying to stay busy and staying doing positive things. And one of the things I did was probably cut down some of my social media because there's so many experts out there who have words, but they don't have the responsibility. So I hear people say certain things. I'm like, how could you say, sir? How could you even say that? But you know what? I just limit myself and uh, try to stay in the positive mode. That is, that's good advice um, as far as staying, you know, present in the moment and, and, keeping your spirits up during a hard time, but wanted to switch gears just a little bit. Um, you've been heavily involved with Rolling Thunder and you served as the president of the DC branch. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and um, why it mattered to you? And also what's ahead for that? Will there be more rides in the future? So Rolling Thunder was started by Vietnam vets, four of them in 1986 to bring a, a accountability to the POW and MIA issue. There were 82,000 there are 82,000 missing, and we don't know what really happened to them. So you always have to think, if this was your son, if this was your daughter, you would want our country looking for them, or at least continue to look for them, not to just give up hope and say they're lost. So um, Rolling Thunder decided to call account to this. So they decided to come to Washington, D.C. They lined up their bikes, and they made sure that the at the Capitol they heard the roar of the engines. So fast forward into the recent time, we're averaging about a million people per event. Um, it's the biggest, it's the biggest one day event in the world. We've had up to 1.5 million people there. And um, really what it is, it's a melting pot of America. You don't know who you're going to see there or what you're going to see there, but you know what, they're all welcome. We're glad to have them. And it's just very, very powerful to see the country unite for, for, our, for our military people. And in the future, we're hoping to do it again. Now, again, we don't know what's going to happen with COVID, like no one else knows what's happening, but we're, we're looking to say, let's try to get Rolling Thunder 2021 back on the, on the books. We were going to do it this year, but COVID had a, had a, 
had other, other plans for us. So unfortunately, we weren't able to do it. But it's a powerful event. If you've ever, if you've never been, I encourage you. If you're anyone who lives in America, if they've never been, they should go one time. It, it inspire you to understand what, what what greatness we live here. You know what greatness America has to offer. And Rob, sir, if if I'm correct, I think you had General Gofin speak was uh, opening remarks at at your event maybe last year or the year before. And also, isn't today's change of command? Is, is it- Change of command is today. So General Goldfin is he's just truly a remarkable individual. My first assignment to the Pentagon was into Air Force XPP, and he worked there. So I've known General Goldfin as a colonel since uh, 2001. And him and I used to go to lunch. He would treat me to lunch, and we would talk about health and fitness. He's so dedicated to fitness. So um, probably in 2017 or 2018, I asked General Goldfein to come and give the opening comments to Rolling Thunder, and he came and he gave a rousing speech. Um, his aide actually said it may have been the best speech he ever heard him give to, at that time. And he fired up the troops, and um, he came and he stayed, I thought he was going to stay 15, 20 minutes. He stayed 45 minutes in a pouring rain. He just stayed out there and saluted the troops. So it was, a, it was an amazing event to see that the Chief of Staff of the United States Air Force cared so much about the POWMI issue and those participating in the run to stay there. So I wish him and his wife, Dawn, um, great luck. I know it's a big day for him and his family, but it's also a historic day for the Air Force because General C.Q. Brown's coming in and he's the first African-American to run a service, you know, a service chief in our United States military. So um, I think the military continues to lead the way in diversity, inclusion, and providing opportunities for those who deserve them. So. Congratulations to Generals Goldfein and Brown. Wow, great, wow. Great way to end it, right? Lead by example, right there. That is, that is, that is great. And also, I, I was reading somewhere, I think I got a message. Is there, what's going on with military times? I heard there might be a little special going on. Yes, so for all, because you're such a cool guy, <laughs> you have such a great co-host there, um, Military Times is gonna give a special so we have a digital edition of Military Times, which is $11.99, but for those followers of Chief Chat, we're gonna give uh, $5 off. So we'll have a $6.99 special. So can I send you a link where they can go to, or we can post it on, um, on some of the comments? You could, put it in the, you could put it in the chat. You see the chat okay. option here? And right. Julie and Leah will actually post it right now as we're talking. So if you have okay. the link, just put it in there. Sounds great. For all those people. And what is your role at uh, Military Times? So I'm the military evangelist there. So Military Times is the uh, independent news source of military. Um, everybody who's joined the military, there's only one thing that we can think of you all know about, and that's Military Times, because all of our service branches have different traditions and different things that we do. But at every checkout counter, there's a rack there for Military Times. So <clears throat> as a military evangelist, I make sure that we, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, we have our partner, I deal with partnerships and um, we look for folks that we want to highlight. For instance, right now, we're working on charities that are veteran related, that are 5013C nonprofit that we can highlight because we have access to about 15 million people per month. So with an audience that big, we want to make sure that these charities get their voices or get their voice out there and that people know about them because the more people know about them, the more that they can help people. So we're trying to increase awareness for military-related charities and military-related businesses as well. I think that, hey, I think that's great. So if anybody watching out there is part of a VSO, you know, an organization with 501C3, I think you said, uh, uh, hey, reach out to Rob in the comments. I'm sure he'll reply and, yes. you know, he'll get back to you. I mean, how great would that be to have your organization highlighted to 15 million people? That's, that's huge. Yes, one of the great ones we worked with was uh, Children of the Fallen Patriots Foundation. And what they do is they provide scholarships to people for children whose mom or dad have lost their life, mostly on, in combat, but it could be sickness related to combat. It can be a disease that took their life, but they raise um, money so that they can send them to college. And the college is of the child's choice. It's not, we're going to say you have this much money. It's wherever you qualify. So if it's Harvard, you go to Harvard. So we've been able to focus and um, work with them and highlight them through the pages of Military Times. And they have uh, raised uh, millions of dollars. And actually, um, one of the recipients was a lady that her dad served back in Vietnam. And she heard about the foundation. 
and she applied and they paid for her, her college uh, scholarship. Oh, that's awesome. That is, that's, that's pretty good. You know, we're trying to do great work there and we really appreciate the ownership. They're 100% behind this. This is part of our goodwill. You know, being a company with a social conscience, we're trying to do good things there. And if we can help our, our service families and our service organizations, that's what we'll do. Excellent. Thanks, Rob. And remind us, where can we find you on social media? Let's see. You can go to, um, where do I go? You know, I really don't follow social media that much because I'm trying to um, stay busy and being on, hanging out on social media, I don't find myself being so productive. But um, how about if you just, you know what? There is really no place where you can find me that much because I'm, <laughs> so I don't want to give you something that I'm not going to follow that much, but thank you for the opportunity. Yes, sir. The, All good. Uh, what about the president's yeah. fitness council? Is Do, do y'all have a, a Facebook or a, a Twitter? Oh, yes. Yeah. You can find more information about the, thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. uh, the president's council, you can find us at www.hhs.gov. What, so what, uh, if we, if we go there, do, do, what initiatives do you have planned for? You, you have two more years you were appointed. Yes, sir. Right. What's what's your plan for the next two years before we go? So the whole world could hear. What's your plan for the next two years? In that well, world? so, you know, our, our plans are in a whole pattern because of COVID. So we're really not sure. But I do know some of the things we really want to focus on is youth sports activities. How do we get children to get sports? And it's not just about the sport. It's about the lessons of leadership and dedication and inclusion and diversity again. So sports teaches you a whole lot of things. So we want to make sure that we can get kids being active and moving. We're also considering or working with something that I have brought up to the council is how do we work with the service VSOs? Because a lot of our service members are getting older. They miss that, that, that community did that they had where they would get up and do PT together and things of that sort. So maybe there's a way that we can uh, work with the American Legion or the VFW or um, AMVETS and say, you know, let's come up with a program that we encourage your members to get out and exercise and maybe we get them on their phones doing push-ups or sit-ups or um, we have certain days where all these VSOs come together and say, let's do this exercise, not as the VFW, not as American, but as veterans, you know, the more that we can do together to, in, to encourage and inspire people to stay fit, the better it will be for our country. I, I love it. Love the ideas. You know what I mean? And then after a, hey, and then of course, after they do their workout, they can have virtual happy hour. Like, <laughs> with a protein shake and a banana. With a protein shake and a banana. The healthy virtual happy hour. We'll, we'll see that. <laughs> That's right. But you know, Chief, I, I have spoken to some of our, our more senior veterans and some of their inspiration to stay fit is their grandchildren. They want to be able to charge and run and, and go to their grandkids' games. They want to be able to be a present in their grandchildren's life. So uh, mobility is a big thing for them. So staying fit, sometimes it's not just for them, it's for their grandf it's for their grandkids to make sure that grandma or grandpa is able to be there for them. So if that's the inspiration they need, that's great too, but we just want people to be fit. Well, thank you. Thank you, Rob. We're about to wrap this up. Do you have any, uh, any final comments you want to you wanna state? First, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, for all those who are serving our great nation, who have served our great nation, thank you. Um, we continue to be just the country that others emulate. You know, as I've said many times, people die to get in America. They don't die to get out. And that's because this is the land of opportunity. While we might have some problems right now, we'll get over it. You know, the country is always faced with problems, but we always come back stronger, better on the other side. So, um, Chief, for this being your second to last one, thank you for your service. You've been there four years. So I'm sure you've done some great things. They're going to miss you, Leah and Julie. They've, uh, I'm sure they're going to miss you because you, you developed a great team. But um, good luck in the next assignment. We'll be in touch. Um, it's not bad to be the second guy to uh, close your career out here on the radio. John Stewart's next. That's pretty good for me. So I appreciate it. So um, thanks again for everybody. Everybody out there, have a great day. Be safe. Wash your hands. Um, I'm sorry, you can't hug each other. So uh, just be careful. And um, thank you for the opportunity. Hey, stick around, sir. Stick around while I close this out. Don't don't hang up here. But thank you. Thank you for the kind words. And of course, you know, I'll, once everything clears up, I'll invite you out to Tyndall. So you give a little speech out there, motivate the troops out there. I'd love there to do it, sir. Thanks All right, again. So
So, sir, thank you so much for spending time with us. Thank you, of course, for your service and everything you've done for this great nation. Um, America's Airmen, Soldiers, Sailors, Marine, Coasties, and military families appreciate you and appreciate everything you're doing for our nation as the president of the, the Sports Fitness and Nutrition Council. Um, we wish you all the best. Thank you so much. And exchange out. Bye. Bye. Thank you.